Hello and welcome to the Vital Truth Channel. I'm glad you came by to see us today and to hear what uh, we would have to say. I want you to know that I love you. I really truly love people because I know that Jesus loves you. He loves you more than I ever could. He reached down and revealed himself to me and his great love to me when I was unlovable. And I really, you know, we love him because he first loved us. And because the Father drew us unto Jesus is the only reason we even recognize that we were in need of a Savior. We can't even fully understand that you know, we can read the scriptures, we can listen to preachers, and they can tell us we're a sinner. But I don't think we fully comprehend it and take it in until Jesus reveals to us his great love. We would never understand that we needed a Savior because we're so consumed in, you know, that we're a good person. Usually most people... With, there are exceptions, but most people are morally good and try to do good and are outstanding citizens. And they figure, you know, hey, if I'm not out murdering and committing adultery and lying and stealing and all of those things, I'm a pretty good character there. But, you know, it takes the Father drawing us with godly sorrow an old-fashioned repentance to come to Jesus to turn from our wicked ways and realize that we are a sinner born into sin not by choice it's just the natural thing that happens to each and every person that comes through woman and is born into this earth as a human being and you know I was thinking about that and I don't even know what the title of this message is going to be. I don't even know what I'm going to say. I just really felt that I needed to come on here and to let you know how urgent it is now, the time that we're in. The darkness is growing darker every day. Spiritual wickedness in high places uh, it's getting rough and it's going to get a lot rougher before it all winds up. And I was thinking, you know, we see so much and hear so much and you know that you can, well, the old saying is you can only believe half of what you see and nothing that you hear. The only true source that any of us have of truth is the Lord Jesus Christ and what He would reveal to us through the Holy Spirit who doesn't speak of Himself but He speaks what He hears from the Lord and brings that to us. But I was thinking about, you know, let me put my glasses on here. You would laugh if you'd see. I've got little notes all over the house on envelopes and uh, flyers and things that come in. I do, wherever I'm at, if I'm in the kitchen and cooking or doing dishes and the Lord reveals something to me, I jot it down. It could be on a flower bag or a cornmeal bag for all I know and, and you'll there's little things and no one would even know well what is that what is that chicken scratch she's put on there but it means something to me you know um, I know what it means because Jesus revealed it to me and that's the way each one of us need to be in the place we need to be in with him it doesn't matter who else understands us when we receive from him when they come against us, they've come too late to convince us of any other thing because when you know the truth, 
The truth will set you free and you will embrace that at all cost and you won't allow anyone to come in because it's so precious. It's the most precious thing that you have and you won't allow someone to just take it from you. But I was thinking, you know, without Jesus, we are totally helpless and we're hopeless. He is our hope. He is our help. And I was thinking in the body of Christ, when I see all these arguments rising and these little petty things, you know, people fighting and arguing over things that, they cause great devastation. They cause um, uh, discord and all kinds of evil workings, and they shouldn't be. But folks, in the true kingdom of God, there is no spirit of competition. We're all paid the same wages, no matter what hour we come into the kingdom. There's no unions. There's no seniority. Every last one of us are servants. That's the highest calling in the kingdom of God is to be His servant and be obedient to Him, serving one another, serving the body of Christ, serving Jesus and working in his vineyard, in his harvest, laboring. We're all under one master, one Lord, one King, one Savior, the holy spotless Lamb, unblemished Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. And in his kingdom, do you realize he rules? He's the King what he says goes. We don't have an opinion to voice. We don't have any authority whatsoever except the authority that Jesus gives to us. Do you remember in the Bible, and even if you haven't read the Bible, most people have watched The Passion of the Christ, so you'll know what I'm talking about one way or the other. But when Jesus was standing before Pilate, Pilate said, Don't you know that I have the power to crucify you? Do you remember how Jesus answered him? He said, You only have the power that my Father gives to you. So the next time that anybody decides to get all puffed up in their own knowledge, in their leadership roles, in this world, in this life, in any capacity that you think, in your own spiritualness, your religion, do you know that you only have the power that God gives you because He is in full control. Jesus is in full control of everything that happens on heaven, in heaven, and on earth. He is in full control. There are no big eyes or little U's. It's all Jesus. Let's see. And then, if you think about this, do you realize that when we come to Jesus, we're born again, and we're born of His Spirit as newborn babes in Christ Jesus? And we know the spiritual things through the natural things. And we think about little babies when they're born in the natural, and how they begin to recognize different things, and they grow, and they develop. and I was thinking about how, you know, in this world, no one has to teach us how to be evil, how to be wicked. We're real good at it. We're proficient. We are proficient at that. We are good at operating and hiding in darkness. 
But when we're brought into the kingdom of light, we're transformed. And that's when you see Jesus high and lifted up, you will be like Isaiah the prophet and see yourself and say, Oh, woe is me, a man of unclean lips. You'll realize that you're worthy of nothing more than death and damnation. You're so small, just a speck, a piece of dust compared to eternity, to the eternal kingdom of God, to God the Father, to Jesus Christ, His Son, to the Holy Spirit of God. We're nothing. And you'll soon realize the more you're in His presence, the more the Holy Spirit teaches you you'll find out that what you thought you knew you really didn't know anything he continues to take you deeper and deeper and deeper it's unsearchable riches there is no end it continues to grow and to get deeper and only he can reveal that to you it doesn't matter if you apply your entire life every waking moment to study. You will never scratch the surface of where Jesus wants to take you through the Holy Spirit of God. Unsearchable riches. One of the reasons I wanted to come on here is to let you know that no matter what you've done, no matter how poorly you think of yourself, no matter how damaged you feel that you are, whether you were raised in an abusive home, whether you were abused outside of your home, maybe you're in an abusive marriage, it just, you know, those things are sad and they're very difficult to overcome but I want you to know that you are somebody because Jesus loves you loves you enough that while you were yet a sinner he gave his life for you you weren't perfect when he died we weren't even on manifested on this earth yet but he knew us he knew that he was giving his life that we would be reconciled back to God the Father that we could have eternal life where there's peace and beauty and everything is abundant no more sin no more sorrow no more tears all is joy and gladness in the service of our dear King but I want you to know that no matter what religion you were raised in, no matter what you have gone through or will face, Jesus truly cares. And after he gave his life, he cared so much that even before he knocked on your heart's door, or when you were in sin or even if you once knew him and for some reason fell into deception or thought that it was so hard that you couldn't make it he continued to show up and keep you and shelter you and not allow your life to end in this state that your soul was in that it would be doomed he really cares and he set his watchmen to watch for him oh watchmen what of the night and these watchmen are sounding the alarm and they're telling everyone look up for your redemption draws nigh the king of kings and the lord of lords is soon to appear in the eastern sky and he's going to gather his bride there's many things that are happening and if you're not praying and you're not in tune with the Holy Spirit 
and obedient and listening to what he's saying. These things will go past you and you won't see and you won't hear because he said there will be people who have eyes and don't see and ears that don't hear. We need to pray that God would open our eyes to see and our ears to hear and our hearts to understand what the Spirit is saying to the children of God where things are beginning to take place and happen that are just so evil and wicked and devastating. Jesus even said that if it were possible in these days that the very elect would be deceived. We have to be able to hear Jesus Please find him for yourself. Don't take anybody's word for anything. Trust no one with your soul, with your family. I would love to see each and every one of you living a close, dedicated life filled with love and obedience to Jesus and your whole family praying right beside you Households ready, waiting for the Master. Please don't trust the preciousness of your eternal life with anyone other than Jesus. I hardly know what else to say. I know that He loves you, that He's pleading for you to come unto Him Lay down all the heavy burdens that you've been carrying around. Lay them down and allow Him to wash you, purge you, and cleanse you. Make you whiter than snow. Put a robe of righteousness, His righteousness, around you. And make you a brand new person, a new creature, a new creation in Christ Jesus. Soon it will be too late. Things will begin to happen and men's hearts will fail with fear. A lot of people will curse God and blame Him for the things that are coming upon the face of the earth rather than repent. If we could today hear and look and see into hell there isn't one soul there that isn't confessing that Jesus Christ is Lord. They would give anything that they ever had on this earth to come back and change things, to repent, to serve Him, to love Him, and to warn others. Please give your heart to Jesus today. If you feel His presence, if you hear Him in your heart, please take the time to invite Him in. He'll reveal His self to you. If you're still unsure that He's even real or that He even cares about you, just steal away somewhere by yourself for a few moments and just say, Lord Jesus, if you're real, if you love me like this woman says you do, reveal yourself to me. Make yourself real to me that I will know that you died for me, that you love me, that there's hope for me, and that I can be with you forever and never know what it would be to be separated from your spirit and your presence. I want all of you to be strong and to be encouraged. Know that your power, your strength, your comfort, your wisdom, everything that you're going to have need of will be found through Jesus Christ and the Spirit of God living and dwelling in you through your obedience. 
disciplining yourself now, getting ready now. Ask him how to prepare spirit, soul, and body. Some of you, he may say, he wants you to relocate and to move. He knows you're living somewhere that will not be safe for you. Others may need to be storing back food and water, making preparation. Others need to be saved. All of those things will do you no good. What would you give in exchange for your soul? You know, if you have all of the things of the world and you're prepared and you've got bunkers and you've got years worth of food, what good will that do you if your soul isn't ready? Because in that day, the rich, the poor, the great, the small, the kings, the leaders, the servants, the bondsmen, the slaves, they're all in the same boat. And they'll all be crying for the rocks and the mountains to fall upon them and hide them from the face of God, the face of Jesus. But men will seek death at that time and they won't be able to find it. The wrath of God will be poured out upon a wicked and perverse generation and he will destroy them. He takes no pleasure in the death of those who are not ready to meet him. But he is a just God, a righteous God, and he will be seeking vengeance for his children, all the little aborted babies, all of the martyred saints. I love you so much. I pray for everyone that comes across our channel Here's our videos that in some way we have touched your lives, that Jesus has reached through us and touched you and will draw you to his self with a deep walk, a deep relationship with him that no matter what we must face, what calamity comes, what disaster comes, whether it, death comes, that we will be ready, prepared, completely enveloped and covered up with the Holy Spirit of God and be able to see Jesus and endure unto the very end and be saved and go to spend eternity where He is. He went away to prepare a place for us that where He is, there we can also be. If our name is in the book of life, and we are a born-again child of God. I love you. I pray for you. Be strong. Stay steadfast. And Jesus bless you. Bye-bye.